Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea and welcome back to another high level game on Starcraft 2. Today we have in the bottom right spawning as the blue Protoss player playing for team Kwangdong Freaks. It is Trap. Spawning in the top left as our orange Terran player today. It is none other than Kaizi Gaming's time. Fantastic little TVP here as we see some uh, minor probe harassment going on over here on Berlingrad. Time versus Trap, both players start with a T, but they have very different races and very different playstyles as well. Time is an aggressive player who likes to really bring the action to the opponent. And Trap, well, Trap can really do it all. It's a very diverse player, most of the time uh, leaning a little bit towards standard. Mm, look at that cute little move, that probe just uh, chilling near the rocks. Could be a geologist or something like that, just studying these rock formations. Goes in, sees absolutely nothing. We'll know that there's a, a Reaper over here, as well as a Bunker on the way. It's going to be Reaper, Marine, Marine, some added safety. We'll delay that initial reactor, though. But you have three units by the time that the first Adept arrives. And after that, by the time the second Adept arrives, the Bunker should be uh, done well, by, by quite a while already. Even now, it's going to finish in time. So really, this Adept should be capable of doing nothing. And then the second Adept also should be capable of doing nothing. And that means that Trap will have a, a pretty useless start here. It's a double chrono as well, so quite some energy spent on these two adepts uh, making their way across the map right now. Where's the Reaper relaxing? Oh, it's in the bunker, just chilling. Doesn't want to go for any scouts. I don't think in general time has scouted anything yet, yeah. Just stayed at home with all the SCVs. Does provide some extra money. Also means that he's somewhat in the dark right now. No mining whatsoever done in the natural. First thing is going to be a Hellion out of here. Two Marines and a Hellion surely is enough to deal with two adepts, right? Ooh, look at that! him juggling with the range of these adepts and the range of the hellion it's kind of cool honestly this stalker does end up dealing with the reaper in a pretty uh, decent manner as well do like seeing that warp gate is about to finish up we see some uh, chronos on the blink here you know i don't really mind this start for trap all that much it's up for worker still blink is going to finish probably barely not in time for the first medevac with the two mines but can't really blame him for that Time's getting some of that information here, knowing that there's no fast... Ooh, actually, well, that Reaper gets no information. Except it now is aware of how it feels to be slaughtered by two adepts. Not quite sure if that's the type of information you really want in life, though. It's like knowing how it feels like they have a cigarette burned on your arm. Once I was standing next to someone in a line, uh, and this guy was having a cigarette, like, just down low, and it, on my arm, and I felt it, and it was this weird sensation, and... Sometimes something hurts, but you're not quite sure where it's coming from, how it's happening. And I also wasn't sure if it was hot, warm, or if something was stabbing me. And I was like, holy crap, there's a cigarette just burning my my arm. And there was a spot there for like three or four weeks. And a cigarette imprint. I barely even apologized. I'll recall that until this day. It's just Like it was no big deal. It's like just burned a cigarette on my arm. It's like if he could have made any of a smaller deal of it, then I'm not quite sure how. I was kind of tempted to just ask him if I could do it back, you know, then we'd be even, but it wouldn't really fix my problem. It probably would have made me feel a little bit better in the moment than the day after would have made me feel worse. Might have been a drink or two involved as well, but I remember being fairly upset about it all. The entire, uh, the entire episode. All right, uh, six stalkers made their way across the map as we have a uh, single mind drop just chilling in the dead space here. I'm not quite sure if Trap is aware of this, uh, Trap is right now blinking into the main base, and that should trigger this medevac to go in. I said that should trigger this medevac to go in, but right now it feels like time is uh, being kept busy by these stalkers. It's going to end up losing a couple of marines. We see five marines already falling. None of these stalkers will die. This is some interesting decision making here out of time. Which is just absolutely not doing anything with this medevac. I am just shocked, surprised. Stalkers are going to blink in towards the bottom side. There is a tank in position over there with one big shot on the Stalkers. No, none of these Stalkers is going to get taken out. There's still three Stalkers here in the natural as well. No battery going down in this area quite yet. It feels like Trap is somewhat aware of what's going on. This tank, by the way, moving in position to take another pot shot. Blink Stalkers will move out at this point. Templar Archive starts researching Storm. We don't have any Forge upgrades yet. 
So most likely this is going to go into a little bit of a storm timing. With a prism, 3-4 Templar in a prism, we get the charge out as well. And the moment that time either moves across the map or tries to establish a third base, that is the timing where Trap really wants to start hitting and wants to start dealing a little bit of damage. This third commander, of course, is way later than whatever Trap has here for a fourth base. Uh, this worker is not going to be building a Nexus, but we'll just be heading out for a pylon. We still have these Stalkers down here. It makes me believe that Trap is somewhat aware of what's going on in the dead space over here. He must know. He must know that something is going on. He's even moving these Stalkers further, closer to the edge. I think that Time might have actually forgotten about the medevac, though. It wouldn't surprise me if it just gets F2'd with the next army move that... Uh, <laughs> That time has. That's a typical Terran move as well, you know? Leave a unit there for the entirety of the early game, and then once things get a little dicey, you F2 your entire army, and either your Raven or your Medevac with your single mine or your double mine just moves straight over five Stalkers and you lose it. It's just Terran things. Just Terran things. Good vision uh, coming out of Trap as well. There's at least a little bit of vision everywhere on the map. This observer is going to provide uh, vision on the potential move-out pattern. Stalker's still in position. I'm just going to keep... An oh, here we go. Actually, just in time, there's the medevac drops in. Both of these mines are going to end up burrowing. Trap not responding whatsoever is going to lose 11 workers to that. That is a pretty big deal, actually. 11 workers is definitely a very big deal. And not much was happening during all this. The medevac is going to at least temporarily escape, but... No, it's actually going to escape for real. Look at that. Oh, maybe a feedback. Maybe a feedback. Yep. Pew. Sniped out of the sky. That matter of fact, never know what hit him. Just like me with the cigarette in the line. Terrible experience. Would not want to be that matter of fact right now. Um, there is still a prism with this, right? Where did that pr Oh, prism is actually going in towards the main base. It's filled with zealots. So we see a zealot drop in the main base. Templars not in the prison means that they're a little more vulnerable here, especially against things like tank fire. Two Vikings out already, and we have the first ghost being produced too. Quite frankly, this is not the worst position for time. I thought he would be in a way worse position after that early game. These stalkers, they did a really did a number on him, it felt like. Ends up uh, you know, everything ends up okay here. Time is being pretty defensive as well here i think what what happens here for time is that time asked himself okay what happened in the early game i did hardly any damage in like the first six minutes my opponent got good tech good eco um, i just want to be, be building tanks right now and just kind of either set up for a massive mid-game tank push with a couple of goes there one one or I just take a, a faster fort base, throw down an armory, and then maybe try to fight somewhere around 2-2. Two, two. Like, these are two key timings that you can kind of play around. Two more goes on the way makes me believe that we're really focused around the timing within the next, well, 40, 45 seconds or so. Um, especially because we're not seeing an armory yet either. It kind of makes me lean in that, in that, in that direction. We do have Enhanced Shockwave. That's a 79 second upgrade. So, hitting... Before this upgrade is finished, wouldn't make a lot of sense. And we do see the armor, we do see the eBay coming down right now. We have the fort base on the way already. So perhaps time is going to stay home for a little bit longer. The problem for Terran often is that if you stay at home for too long, Toss is just going to get a lot of map control, very high work account. We're already working off of eight gas potentially here. Good defensive setups with multiple Templar on the fort base. Um, we even have Templar in the natural as well. We have Templar in the main army. We currently are at 8 Templar total, yeah. 2 Colossi out, 4 Immortals. This is a really powerful army. And without Liberators fighting such a, a heavy Robo army is going to be super difficult. It's actually just going to be extremely tricky here to do for time. And I guess that's the reason why time is just staying at home. He says, hey, I can fight into you. But I also don't think you can fight into me. So we're going to make this a very long game. We're going to stall this out for as long as possible. And then we'll wait and see what happens. Maybe I can take you out in the late game. Perhaps I can. But at least we'll get to these maxed armies that both of us want. And Terran often can decide to do something like that. They have very solid defensive setups. And time is truly embracing it in this game. Saying, okay, my early game didn't go how I wanted it to. My mid game, sure, I killed some workers. But then afterwards, I really didn't do anything either. Um, 
And Toss just has all this tech right now. We have the Dark Shrine on the way already. We have the Gravitic Drive, I think it is. Yep, there we go. Warp Prism Speed. Um, is there even a Warp Prism out right now? There is a Warp Prism out. And Speed would definitely come in handy at this point. As it's being chased by a couple of Vikings. The turret almost managed to take it out. Two more Vikings coming in right now. I don't think this Prism can ever run out though. But perhaps can drop off these Zealots before it ends up dying. It's going to get rallied into a turret. Yeah, this is not going to be pretty. Uh, douche, douche. And gone it is. Out of this world right now. Four Colossi, four Immortals. As well as four Disruptors. The 444 army. Absolute classic here. We however have to the double amount of four as well. Two times four. Eight Templar. So, and 60 Stalkers. That's actually pretty sick. And four Zealots. You gotta be kidding me. The Adept and the Sentry ruined this beautiful uh, multiple of four. But... Everything else is great. And well, we don't count the pros because that's not an army unit. Otherwise, this would have been sick. I really do like that. Uh, Dark Shrine is upgrading the blink. The, the Shadow Stride, Dark Stride, whatever it's called. Shadow Stride. Dark Templar blink. Everyone knows it as Dark Templar blink. Fantastic upgrade. I remember being in the room when it got announced that they were. <laughs> they wanted to put blink on Dark Templar. That was a lot of laughing. And then it died down. They were like, wait, you're serious? Like, yep, you're serious. Yeah. The laughing quickly stopped. It wasn't so funny anymore. <laughs> Saw some concerned faces. <laughs> yeah, great moment. 2016, 2015 maybe. Can't quite recall how long ago it is. Yes. The golden days. <laughs> Before the, the blink shadow strider did. No, it's actually a fun ability. I've seen a lot of games being decided by it, especially against Terrans, which... Sometimes feels a little bit annoying, you know, it blinks on top of a planetary, Terran is out of position, you lose a base instantly. And in this matchup, losing planetaries just can be an instant loss, basically. You you lose the anchor on that side with the planetary, your SCVs are extremely vulnerable, you don't have anything prepared there. Defending two sides as a Terran is just really, really difficult without any static. So planetaries just, yeah, they provide a lot of value. They really do. And losing one instantly to nine, ten DTs blinking. And on the other hand, I mean... If the Toss manages to get 20 supply of extremely expensive units to your side of the map and blink on top of a planetary while it's not being defended, maybe it deserves to die. Oh my god, that's a lot of big storms here covering that army completely. Um, no more storms are in this army right now. Can we get a connection with some of these disruptors? One disruptor extra is going to fall here. This is an odd game because it feels like the fights so far have been pretty even. But the income should be getting better and better here for Trap, who's already double expanding at this point, going up to, what is that, seven bases, while he's up against only four bases. We have Tempest on the way. Tempest are, a Tempest are just a weird unit. Um, in that it's a unit that feels really, really good to have until it needs to start fighting. Like, you love the long range and... You know, everything that comes with that extremely long range. You know, those poking and bullying. And you feel like such a cool guy. It's kind of similar as if you're in, like, a classroom. And you're, like, this scrawny, nerdy guy. And you're just throwing, like... You're shooting paper at the, you know, the, the, the little paper balls. You know, through one of these pipes that we used to have. Make that noise. A little bit of spit on the paper ball. And it would stick to the guy in front of you. Fantastic times in high school. That's basically what you're doing the entire lesson. And then... You know, you don't really hurt the guy in front of you. And at the end of the lesson, the guy just hits you in the face and he breaks your nose. And that's kind of what usually happens with Tempest. You're just kind of shooting these paper balls at your opponent until he gets annoyed enough and then pulls the trigger. You just shoots your face in with a couple of Vikings and all your Tempest die. And this is, this is, this really is the problem. Of course, Tempest do a little more damage than the paper ball did to the guy in front of me in math class. But still, it, it, it's a very similar mechanic here. You always got to be so careful when maneuvering on the map with these Tempest. Because in a direct fight, they absolutely suck. Hit one EMP on it, and they're even worse than before. Like, this unit has no future whatsoever. Little little, little paperweights. Pathetic. Bunch of DTs, of course, on the right side as well. Now, I really do like DTs, but if you're playing Tempest and DTs, that means that your main army is even smaller. Like, you hit two EMPs on this army, the army is dead. It's, it's not going to be a close fight, right? If you have more than eight Marauders here, and there's 11 Marauders, 
Problem is there's still three tanks. There's a lot of Liberators and Liberators are actually the opposite of a counter to the Tempest because Liberators want to also move slowly, but the Tempest want to move even slower. So the more the game slows down, the happier the Tempest is. Once your the Protoss opponent switches into these Tempest, you want to get rid of all your siege units, ideally, because you want to engage into that army as quickly as possible. If you're having a siege battle, you're not going to win against the Tempest. It's like instead of shooting paper balls, you're just blowing very hard in the in the hair of the person before you, which is fairly annoying, but doesn't even really hurt. Maybe like a cold breeze. If it happens for too long, you might get sick. Couple of scans on top of this army. These rocks are going to get taken out as well. Observer in position. Sees a lot. This is a useful observer. It's going to probably get taken out here. Two <laughs> EMP on it. Shoot it! Shoot it! There we go. It's important to do that type of stuff. Despite almost losing one Viking for it. The vision is way bigger than that one Viking is. Ooh, the keys make their way in towards the natural. You immediately see Trap just running back home. He's like, oh, I'm dealing damage. Please don't pull the trigger, sir. I don't want to die yet. He's just moving back right now. Correct call. He's just building some random cannons and batteries on the map. It's a play I really do like. I don't quite understand what these four stalkers are going to achieve here on the bottom side. I'd much prefer seeing like a Templar over here and another Templar over here. Less supply, but way more effective at holding these cannon lines. Four more Tempests on the way. Okay, I already was a little bit wary of building more than two Tempests. Now he's just actually tripling the amount of Tempests that he currently has. Of course, he did lose a lot of the DTs, which means that some supply freed up. Cannon walls and battery walls and gateway walls are being built in the middle of the map. Of course, the gateway just for quick reinforcements as well. This is actually kind of cool. It's like literally just playing campaign at this point. This is actually how I played the campaign when I played. It's like building buildings in the middle of the map for quicker reinforcements. There's cannon walls everywhere. The wall of certain areas that you think are important. They're never really important. Campaign is an interesting thing as well. I actually have never finished the Legacy of the Void campaign. I got too bored with it. Uh, I wasn't too invested in the story anymore. I did play the Heart of the Swarm campaign. Oh, big fight. It is what I mean. You see these guys <laughs> throwing the paper balls, man. Like, they just die. Boom, broken nose and another broken nose here. A couple of these tempers are going to get taken out. This is just really painful to watch. These guys suck so much. God, what a pathetic unit. And you just gotta keep rebuilding them as well. Once you start with Tempest, it's kind of a, it's kind of an addictive unit. In, if there's any Tempest alive, you kind of want to add in more. Oh, there's only one that's useless. I'll need five at least. But then you have five useless units. And it really is all they do is you become more useless the more you get. You just want to be capable of one-shotting Vikings, and then <laughs> you spend like seven minutes one-shotting ten different Vikings. And the guy moves forward with like 12 Vikings once, hits an EMP, kills 8 Tempest in 10 seconds. Like, oh. See you in 9 minutes. You rebuild the Tempest, go again. Medivac gets taken out here, and then the fight happens. Ooh, no EMP on the Templar there, though. Uh, Liberators moving forward. Liberators not very useful in this type of fight, but still, Trap needs to, uh, needs to move back to this cannon position. We have a couple of these Templars over here. Storm is barely just now available. We have two DTs on the bottom side. And when I say that, oh my god, there's 15 DTs on the map. Are all DTs over here? Okay, there's still three DTs in the main base. I think Trap forgot about them. I forgot about them. And Time probably also forgot about them. We have, so then there's 13 DTs somewhere over here, I guess. Oh, 12. I can't count. I'm an idiot. I actually have negative IQ. That's insane. 15 minus 3 is 30. Brilliant stuff. <sighs> oh, oh my god, you see the nuke shadow? I didn't see that. I saw it fly over here. The shadow of the nuke. I did not know that was a thing. That looked crazy. Um, anyway, this base is going to lose a couple of its cannons. That means there's no detection currently. How many more nukes are available? Uh, I think it's it's a structure, right? A nuke? Or does it count as a unit? I'm never sure what it counts as. Observer is going to get taken out. Uh, we have a decent ghost count. I really believe that liberators are completely the incorrect call here. 13 liberators, two tanks. Two tanks may be useful in defending these bases, and even the mines I kind of like to defend bases against uh, these Dark Templars. But having so many Liberators is just really playing into Trap's unit composition. And there's no point. One of the things that I like that Trap is doing, very, very much so, is the fact that he's staying on a low worker count. Like getting Tempest, getting DTs, and 
having a high work account would absolutely be detrimental to your army. Like, you'd not be capable of doing anything. This looks like a pretty decent fight for the Protoss. But as I say that, literally everything is saying There's just no army. It's just all... It's all paper. It's, uh, it's, like a, it's like a house made of... Not of bricks. Not of wood. But of, like, hay or something like that. I don't think it's very stable. I don't know a lot about, about building houses, but it, it doesn't sound very stable to me. Ooh, look at all these DTs, though. These guys are moving in, and despite this planetary being built of bricks, it is going to get absolutely sniped and taken out. Time won that fight, but then we had quick reinforcements with these stalkers. A bunch of disruptors are out as well, and this is actually a kind of power powerful army. This is an army I really do like. Going to be able to maneuver around very quickly, take out the buildings, snipe a base here and there. We immediately see these DTs kind of... Uh, split off from this army and go towards that top side. It's a really cool move. I'm very fond of. Command center probably gets taken out if Trap decides to right click it. I think that would be a correct call. One more shot, one more shot. No, command center will stay alive. Means we'll get some repair on it as well. I like all of these things very much. Oh, Tempest being built again. Three more Tempest on the way. <laughs> I've lost nine Tempest already. These nine Tempest combined have killed two Marines and half a medevac. And I heard they also managed to make one turret go burning. <laughs> lit, lit one turret on fire, that's about it. God damn, a pathetic unit. It's unbelievable, this guy. Double sensor tower right next to each other. I think it's been around for a while. I've been seeing it on the mini map. It's like, oh, what's going on there? The double sensor tower move is an all time uh, Terran favorite. Once again, these Liberators moving forward against this army. I do kind of like these Liberators. You can easily seal off areas. And now the task for Trap is fairly simple. It is to counterattack where the Liberator army is. And so having many bases is a huge asset in this case. Liberators struggle with breaking cannon and battery walls, especially if there's Templar there. NDTs are great at counterattacking because Liberators cost a lot of supply. You need some bio army under it as well, which means that you don't have a lot of supply to defend. And that means that these DTs are going to snipe another planetary right now on the right side. Trading base for base is a good thing right now here for Trap. This is not a fight that he can take, though. I think there's plus two ship weapons. There's plus three ship weapons. So still two-shotting these Stalkers. If an EMP hits, one-shotting these Stalkers with the Liberators right now. Dark Templars do take out that top right side planetary, as uh, time is truly struggling in this game right now. I feel like he's never truly got... Uh, a proper 6th or a 7th base up. Sure, this was mining for a little bit, but this one got taken out for a while as well. We're just lacking mining. I think the overall fights haven't even been that bad for time. No, resources lost is extremely close. Despite Trap being in control this entire time, being in control of this game, we have these Templars moving in. Oh my god. If the Liberators would have staged Siege, that would have been... They would have died. DTs are coming back home, though. We'll take out the remaining bio forces. How many DTs is this? 17 DTs. That sounds like a pretty decently sized issue here for uh, for time. How's he going to be dealing with that? I'm not quite sure. Lots of Templars are hitting their storms right now, but these Liberators going absolutely ham on these Disruptors. Tempest shooting from a distance, trying to take out this Orbital Command, but instead that one Tempest oh, is going to get fairly damaged. TT's moving in towards the natural. Are the units in position to deal with them? We have an EMP. Do we have an EMP? Yes, we have one EMP. There's not enough bio though to really deal with this. So these stamps are trying to regain their shields. Plus two air weapons finally on the way. It's extremely late as well for how long these air units have been out already. Stampers continue shooting, good at breaking these Liberator lines, of course. With three Tempests, it only takes nine minutes to take out a single Liberator. Look at them go. Look at these madmen. Oh, this is unbelievable. What a speed of taking out these two useless liberators. <laughs> God, I love these fights. Um, Trap is still winning, however. Has a 6k bank. Just purely because he's been out mining his opponent by so, so much. Couple of big EMPs hitting once again. Five more Vikings on the way. This is an army that I much prefer seeing out of time right now. So the Liberators are taking out the Tempest. The Vikings are taking out the Tempest. Colossi also about to fall. And if all of these high-value units actually do end up dying... And time gets an army out that consists of high supply with ghosts, vikings, and a bunch of marauders. There actually is an opportunity. In order to beat an army like that, you need a lot of disruptors. You need up to six, seven disruptors to fight that uh, somewhat effectively. Having a low count of liberators actually is kind of useful as well. Here we go. EMP is going down right now. Liberators will be one-shotting these stalkers because of that. Time is down very far, especially when it comes to the bank. But he's taking pretty decent fights. 
Look at this. Resources lost in favor right now of the Terran player, and the only thing that's really lacking is a mining base. There's almost no gas remaining right now for Trap. That means that Zealots are going to be the name of the game. Triple Disruptor's on the way as well. This right side base is going to get taken out. Super Battery gets activated. Shields get depleted by the EMPs, though. We see a bit of a flank coming in, but time will spot that just ahead of time. Oh, Liberators need to move. Good moves. Very good moves. This base is going to fall, though, and that is very unfortunate because that's going to be the last remaining base for time here. As the Blink Stalkers move in. Oh, Snipe gets cancelled there by that storm. 94 army supply against 99. This is a powerful army. Vikings need to go back into the sky to deal with that Colossi. Two Colossi are out right now. We have five Disruptor, but they're not in this army. This is an interesting Blink. These Zealots will not be capable of winning this fight. Vikings on the ground helping out. Disruptors coming in with the flank. They might be very important here. Vikings, can they live? No, they can't. Not in time, at least. Time. Uh, I just don't think he has enough reinforcements. He's been fighting so well. And actually, he's been winning these last few fights. Just does not have the money. And another warping comes in. And the mineral income is slightly too high. There's gases that can be mined from still. Although it's only two at this point, And Trap is not really doing it. I don't actually think it's going to matter. Are these the three DTs from earlier? I think they might actually be going to get taken out finally. Topside base gets taken back. We can have another 11, 12 zealot warping. Couple of stalkers being added in as well. Finally, gas is being mined. It's 46 supply against 104. And time right now is just dead. It's actually over. Two mines. Well, seven mines uh, still alive total. Make that six. As the disruptor just managed to take one out. And Trap isn't even in a hurry. He's going to ooh, recall towards the bottom side. I mean, his army is just way too big. Yeah, GG gets called. Trap will win this game after a long and pretty fun TVP. Uh, time not quite making it work. And yeah, It's always tricky. If you have a difficult early game, you don't get any map control whatsoever. And your opponent just keeps on expanding and keeps on expanding. And you have that Templar tech with the storm. It's just so difficult often for for Terran to really do anything to try and come back. Time tried his best, had very good fights. I want to stress that once again, being up in the, in the resources lost, it means that the fights were going well, but the eco just wasn't there. The map control always was on the side of Trap. Um, yeah, that's going to be it for me today. Thanks all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thank you, and bye-bye.